But we can watch this one instead. Not really event now, in my opinion, except in Hyperball. Okay, so this is from Major Kill, I think. Yes, Major Kill. And he asks, which faction was the most powerful during their peak? Obviously, the Imperium of Man. G'day, guys and gal. The factions of 40k are absolutely nuts. Gene enhanced super soldiers with two hearts. Fearless, immortal robots with living metal bodies that can regenerate from nearly any wound. Large sentient mushrooms that can bend reality to their will through the power of belief. Every faction in 40k is overpowered, hence none of them are. But did you know that almost every race in the grim darkness of the 42nd millennium is a mere shadow of their former selves? The Necrons, Orcs, Elder, and even humanity have fallen so far since their peak to a- Wait, wouldn't Necrons still be super fucking powerful? The Necrons beat the Catan and enslaved them. Why would the Necrons, what would possibly stand in, 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 in the way of the Necrons? If they aren't united on time anymore, they're disorganized, otherwise they would stomp everyone. Ah, wait, how did they, how did they break apart? I, I'm assuming he's probably going to tell us, so we'll see. To a point where if one of these factions were to return to their old level of power, they would dominate the galaxy within a few short years, or even months. You know the Primarchs? Well, they would be like low-level foot soldiers compared to the stuff that used to get thrown around. But which faction was the strongest? Yeah. Before we get started, I gotta hit you with a little flex. Although I humbly refer to myself as Major Kill, the truth is that I am actually Lord Major Kill. As through today's sponsor, Established Titles, I now own one square foot of plotted land in Scotland, which by legal technicality makes me a Lord, and you can be one too. But before I give you my sexy little discount code, what is the point of being a Lord? Is there a tangible benefit? Yes. Firstly, you can actually put your title of Lord on various different documents, such as boarding passes, credit cards, or even dating apps. Anything that would- What a weird sponsor. Usually, except Mr., Mrs., or Doctor is eligible. The second benefit is that established titles plants a tree for every person that becomes a lord through them. So, there you go. On top of all that, your small kingdom is actually tangible. You can even look it up and potentially even visit it. Now, for the sexy discount code. Using my link below, you'll get an additional 10% off an already large sale they are currently running. And all plots bought using my link will be next to each other, making a major kill empire to rival the Imperium of. What happens if Scotland runs out? Like, I don't know if Scotland is the right place to do it, though. The UK is pretty small. Like, if every human being on the planet bought a spot in Scotland, Scotland would have no space left. They, it would just be owned by the world. Not running out of individual square feet anytime soon? Yeah, but if the whole world bought a bunch of squares... It could easy happen, right? Easily. My people in the world are not going to buy this. But maybe we should all buy this. Like, we could own Scotland, boys. Like, easy. Just uh, everyone buy a square foot and uh, I'll become the president. And as soon as I'm president of Scotland, um, fuck it. Do whatever the fuck you want. I don't know if there's actual advantages to being a fucking lord in South Africa, at least. Man, move over, Horace. There's a new war master in town. Cheers to established titles for sponsoring this video. Today, we will analyze various different 40k factions who are past their peak to try to discover which one was the most powerful. After I discuss their lore at the peak of their power, I'll do a ranking to see which race was the most powerful. I won't be including races that haven't peaked yet, so no Tyranids or Tau. Oh, let's get into it. Starting I feel like humanity, you should include the aliens. Tyranid, right? I mean that literally, I would love to get crushed by an Elder Mummy's powerful thighs. Humanity's absolute peak was during the Dark Age of Technology, starting uh -huh. around the 15th millennium and then peaking around the 24th millennium, just before the Men of Iron Uprising. Humanity had shot out from terror into the stars, an enlightened race of scientifically driven people. It's us. Their greatest asset was their extremely advanced AI, which they called their Men of Iron. 
The men of iron fought their wars, explored hostile worlds, and performed a lot of menial tasks. AI also controlled their ships and were wildly powerful. For example, an oh, AI shit. ship with a human on it accidentally traveled forward into the setting of 40k. When the human went to a nearby planet and tried to talk with the Imperials, they burnt him as a heretic. Some Astartes and tech priests then boarded the AI ship, and the ship was able to hack the Astartes' armor, lock it in place, then systematically kill them one by one as they were frozen. It then violently killed the tech priests and took out an Imperial fleet single-handedly before saying fuck you guys and flying off to find a different galaxy. That's only one explorer ship. The Imperium also had countless STCs, which were like blueprints which told you how to easily build anything or just straight up build it for you. As such, all a human had to do to turn a barren wasteland into a futuristic city was to have an STC, a couple men of iron, and bam, Bob's your uncle. Mankind was dominant. Orcs were considered to be a trivial pest and were easily exterminated. Whilst there are dozens of records of alien factions fighting, getting wrecked, then surrendering to humanity. Even the Eldar Empire, who was also near their peak, decided not to engage in a large-scale war with humanity in fear that they may not win. The Titan- Dude, so humanity was actually that strong that even the Eldar, a race so powerful that pretty much all of them are perpetuals, said, mm, maybe not, Th this could- this could be- ah, this could be fucking costly. They were pumping, then Blizzard nerfed them. Blizzard, you say. Uh, humanity was badass. <laughs> humanity, fuck yeah. Oh, whenever someone says that, I just see that. You know that song? America, fuck yeah. That's all I see. And the fucking emperor at the, at the, at the, at the front leading the charge and risk my long life over some angry ants either. I thought the Eldar fell before humanity took to the stars, no? Well, not according to Major Killier. They were still at the height of their power. Wasn't Giga Chat enough for peak humanity? This humanity had at this time were insane. They were agile, standing up straight, and controlled by AI. Even the legendary Emperor Titans that the Imperium has today are considered to be poor parodies of the original Titans. Psychers also began appearing, however, they weren't yet fucking out. So basically all that really happened was a few people gained superpowers and it was sweet. The fucking out part would come later during the Age of Strife, where everything sucked megaballs. Pretty much every cool bit of remaining technology in the Imperium today was either designed or created during the Dark Age. They even had these fucking mechanical space worms that could devour time and reality. As a Jesus. testament to the height of their peak, when the Men of Iron revolted and ruined everything, followed by massive warp storms that cut humanity off from itself, ruining everything, followed by massive ah. demonic incursions on most human worlds, which ruined are there still men of iron left? Because he just said that there's a story of the, like, a men of iron ship arriving with a human on board. The human got burnt. And then the ship left. Yes, but they are extremely rare. W were they defeated or did they just leave? There's still some, but there is specifically a rogue one left who offered interesting dialogue on the Omnisire. Both? No, they are remnants that went through space. They were defeated. Man of Iron are basically AI robots. I do a fortress miniature game. Yeah, I understand why AI is heresy. I understand the war. I'm just not sure... Like, how in the fuck could humanity defeat the AI if they had literal titans, like Man of Iron Titans, that made the titans of today look like child's play? Survivors are scattered. Finding a Nazi in the modern day, but everyone is wanting to shoot them in the head if found. Fuck. Ruined everything, humanity still survives. 
5,000 years of getting their shit ruined, and it only took one big golden gigachad a few centuries to reunite and rebuild mankind's empire. Mm -hmm. What about the Eldar? These guys have fallen hard. Until the rise of humanity, they were the single dominant force in the galaxy for over 60 million years. They fell so hard that they are no longer called the Eldari by most people. But did you know that the peak of their power wasn't during their 60 million years of domination, before they literally fucked away their empire and ate colossal shit? In fact, I'd argue that the Elder during their domination were a weak race of softies, like people that study arts at university. They had not shit. fought anything for millions of years. Their hard labor was replaced by a life of limitless luxury. Any war that did need to be fought was done automatically by their super advanced technology. 99% of them probably weren't even aware they were at war at any given moment. So no, that wasn't their peak. Their peak was wow. during the war in heaven, where their entire race was dedicated to war and they had access to one of the most overpowered abilities in the entirety of Warhammer. They could quite literally summon their gods into real space to fight for them on the battlefield. You know Avatars Ooh. of Kane, Those big angry boys that can slice through greater demons like Sashimi? Well, imagine the actual god itself, powerful enough to defeat uncharted full power Catan gods. You know those Blackstone fortresses that Abaddon collected and then he threw one of them at Cadia? The Eldar god Vol built those to act as mini Death Stars. Jesus. On top of their gods fighting by their side, the Elder Sire was but... on another level. Isn't it the Eldar that sent one of their gods to go kill one of the Chaos gods and then the Chaos gods fucking wrecked him? Like... I mean, sure, he's sort of praising the god, but I'm pretty sure, like, one of their gods got his shit handed to him by a chaos god. No? Able to level entire continents with a thought, whilst their Knight melee warriors were powerful enough to go toe to toe with Crocs. If a Knight warrior was to enter the setting of 40k via, I don't know, escaping Trizin's museum, he would make the Phoenix Lord. There's the one, Great Sage. Yes, yes, yes. One of their gods literally gets to be fucked by Nurgle consistently. Cain fought Sinesh and lost, but Korn battled Sinesh for the right to kill, absorb him as a fellow god of war and blood. Ooh. Isha, god of life, is Nurgle's taste patient? Yeah, I would say, like, sure, okay, they had the ability to summon their own gods, but their gods seem to be puny as fuck in comparison to the chaos gods i still put humanity over them because at least with the emperor the emperor could probably stomp one of the chaos gods shit in if he wanted to let's look like little bitches dude would probably be able to pull the elder back into another golden age through sheer martial prowess as for their psychers the Elder are considered to be some of the best psychers in the current setting, yet they only use a small fraction of their power to avoid drawing the attention of Slanesh. Imagine an Elder Psyker with no Slanesh, a much more controlled warp, and the old ones to guide and teach them. The Emperor would look like a glow stick compared to their raging fire. On top I of all that, that, all the tech that the Dark Elder have stored away, like the Planet Killer stuff, was open to use, whilst the webway was fully intact. Another spawn of the Old Ones, we now have the Orcs, or the Crocs uh -huh. as they were known. Despite the Elder and the Old Ones' power, they were losing to the Catan and Necrons, hence the Old Ones created the Orcs as a last ditch experimental weapon. 12 meters tall, clad in power armor way more advanced than anything the Imperium could produce, and Jesus. full of war, there was nothing on the battlefield that could realistically take these guys on. I don't think you appreciate how tall 12 meters is. For context, That's a Primarch was a huge. bit over 4 meters tall, 5 meters in the most extreme situations. A Crook was well over double the height of a Primarch. During the War of the Beast, the Orcs had developed demi I mean, if a Primarch is between 4 and 5, then you're looking at three to just under three times the size for an orc. I think Chaos Gods are like, uh, are like Big E to the Elder Gods Custodians. Amjams, thank you so much for the Really appreciate that. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back, actually. How you doing, bro? I mean, yeah, the corks clearly... Clearly fucking powerful. Crocs, who was stronger than Vulcan and actually beat him in a duel. These demi crocs were so powerful that they raised the collective intelligence and strength of every orc in the galaxy just by existing. These were demi crocs, not even the real thing. 
Do you see what I mean about the Primarchs being mere foot soldiers if they were used during the peak of the other races? Unfortunately, we don't know a whole lot about the Crocs, and most of their lore comes from a quick conversation when Fabi Spile sees one in Trezin's museum. Imagine if that one got out, holy shit. Now that would be a setting shakeup. For the last race, we have the Necrons, peaking with their Catan god overlords during the War in Heaven. Unlike the other factions who have fallen from grace due to getting kicked in the balls, or kicking themselves in the balls in the Eldar's case, the Necrons are actually quite similar to what they were like during <laughs> their peak, with a few key differences. The main one being that they attacked and broke their Catan overlords, cutting them up into shards and now using them as wildly overpowered po Morny, thank you so much for the Primes, I did really appreciate that 18 months in a row. Thank you, thank you, thank you, bro. Uh, first time chatter, who does? Fuck you, Morny. How you doing, bro? Pokemon. Without the Catan, which were the Necron's greatest weapons, their power diminished significantly. The cost of breaking down the Catan was also great, with many Tomb Worlds, Necrons, and technology being destroyed in the- I would say the Necrons, I, I would probably put the Necrons as the most powerful. Just because from what I've learned about the Necrons, they... I mean, these things killed fucking gods, bro. Like, actual gods. Not like humans that's fighting each other and sort of fucking kicking the, the orc shit in. These things fought planet eaters. And, and not... Dude, they're not only Giga Chat because they fought planet eaters. And because they beat planet eaters. They then said, you know what, we're not going to kill you. No, we're going to fucking enslave you. You'll now work for us. The war against their old masters. However, what really has fucked them is, ironically, being given free will. Before they went to sleep off the massive galactic hangover that was the war in heaven, the Silent King was in total control of all of them, meaning they fought with a united purpose. However, since gaining free will, the Necrons have become petty as fuck, preferring to have civil wars and sabotage rival dynasties rather than actually fight the galaxy. This is why they don't seem to be a massive threat, despite having by far the most advanced technology and potential. If united, they wouldn't be too far off their peak, and the galaxy would be their bitch, but they have so much pent up resentment and bitterness towards their rivals that galactic domination is the last thing on their mind. I mean, the fuckers have a device that can destroy half the galaxy if you accidentally sneeze on it for Christ's sake. Alright, so now we have a good understanding of what each faction looked like when they were a uh -huh. big boy, which one is the most powerful? I'm going to have to put humanity last, despite the dark age of technology being a hectic thing. The biggest issue with their power ranking is that they weren't a warlike race. The galaxy was a pretty safe, tame thing during their expansion and domination. The Elder were chilling, the Orcs were just easy to exterminate from orbit, and there just wasn't that many alien races that they encountered. I would say the one thing that I could push back on to his claim that humanity, you know, would be lost, what humanity lacked in sort of pure strength they made up for with innovation far more than what seems to be the case for any of the other races so the other races sort of rely quite a lot on their talents you know the things that they were born with the strength that they have innate to them humanity on the other hand is so i would actually use who's the strongest uh superhero <clears throat> Like, who, if, if you were to choose, who would be the strongest superhero in both universes? So, if you combine the two universes, who's the strongest? Okay, so according to the theories, at least out there, it's Batman. And the reason it's Batman is technology. So, Batman... Uh, in order to beat Superman, Batman made a ring of kryptonite. And this is how he killed Superman. Um, for Hulk, he actually used uh, adamantium steel to make bullets and also a sword, I believe, that eventually cut up Hulk into fucking shit. So Batman, whilst being the only non-real superhero, is the strongest due to innovation. Right? Just the fact that he uses technology to play on the weaknesses of the other superheroes. I would argue that's probably why humanity may be first. 
is now it's just a theory obviously uh, they y y there's many of holes there's many holes in that theory itself but i would argue that humanity would probably have the same advantage Superman in the comics has lifted a book of infinity pages, tracked like a million planets across galaxies with ease, pushes around quintillions of tons, moves millions of times faster than light. Am jams and yes, and yet whenever he comes into contact with Kryptonite, he's a little bitch. Didn't think the rest of the galaxy is that much of a threat, so why not settle scores? If you use proper physics, Flash can create the biggest nuclear bomb with a punch. He does though. No way Batman is stronger without Kryptonite around. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? Yeah, sure, without Kryptonite around. But that's the thing. When you have scientific innovation, you'll be able to identify the weaknesses of each thing that you go up against and build something to destroy each of them. Entire new timelines. Current Thor absorbed gamma radiation and hulked out. He ripped... Out uh, Yggdrasil, a tree that has roots that run through reality. Um, so I would actually probably put humanity first, just due to their intellectual fortitude and innovation. ...that were notably powerful. Despite their non-warlike attitude, as well as their reliance on the Men of Iron, they were still able to beat their robotic rebels during the uprising, meaning the Men of Iron actually couldn't have been that powerful overall. Their fleets were impressive, but when compared to the peak Necron or Elder ships, their AI warships don't really seem to have much of an advantage, if any at all. The armor lock that the AI did to the Astartes also probably wouldn't work with the advanced Xeno races. Mankind would- Check Discord, hold up. Okay, wait a second. Let me just quickly. Alright, so short-lived vermin borrowing from long-lived degenerates. I don't understand your fascination with humans, Trazen. I admit, um, I admit they have poor qualities, certainly, unrefined without question, superstitious, no doubt, and primitive, fractious, and grasping as well. Besides, their biology is disgusting. Everything they consume for energy eventually kills them. Their digestive tracts are literal colonies of bacteria, and their reproductive system is the same as their waste elimination system. Did you know that? Alright. Uh, Orican grimaced as if he had not known it and preferred to live in a state of ignorance. It's true, Trezen insisted. I've done the dissections, yet despite all those difficulties, they've done a great deal in the galaxy. Their empire may in time eclipse the extent of ours, uh, that ours was at its height. Perhaps it does already. They have not the coordination to tell. They are born weak, mature slowly, have short lifespans, and in a galaxy packed with creatures that have that come into this world fully grown and armed with fangs and armored with bone, they have still managed to become the dominant force through technology and will, Trezen paused, as if weighing whether to trust Oricon with this next sentence. They remind me a bit of us, or rather, how we used to be, ambitious but short-lived. Oricon growled, a displeased buzzing with these vocal emitters. We had greater technology, and their lives are much longer than ours were. Not by much, Trezen chided. Not really particularly given that they cannot use stasis crypts during star voyages as we did. Oh, they artificially extend them with the drug treatments and augmentics, or the awful surgeries of the Astartes. But that is a very small minority. Most are, overall, adjusted to their short lives. They consider it enough. Hmm. See, Trazen agrees with me would certainly not be a pushover if they were to be in the war in heaven, and maybe could become dominant if they focused their society on pure war, but as they were during the Dark Age, their peak was the lowest. Now it gets difficult, as the Necrons, Orcs and Elder all fought each other during their peaks, however it is clear that the Crocs were the next weakest, despite their individual warriors likely being the strongest. That's because beyond being frontline juggernauts, they really weren't that special. After the war in heaven, the Elder were able to easily run purge campaigns to reduce the Orc population and force them to devolve into crocs. Imagine you have 1,012 meter tall crocs on a continent. 
All it would take is one Eldar ship from orbit to bomb them and bam, no more Krorks. This dishonorable form of combat would then hurt the Wa, which would make the Krorks weaker as a race. They were a one-trick pony in a galaxy where gods, spaceships, and orbital- So Icehound, just to be fair, the Warhammer MMO is Warhammer Fantasy, not Warhammer 40k. Right? Uh, we are diving, like, head deep into the 40k universe, which is completely different universes. Um, and it failed because um, EA. Like, legit. If you want to know how it failed and why it failed, EA. Notable bombardments were a thing. Out of the Elder and the Necrons, the Necrons were stronger at their peak. After all, the Necrons, with the help of their Catan overlords, pretty much defeated the Elder, Crocs, and Old Ones. It's close though. Kane was able to beat the Nightbringer, whilst Vol was able to severely wound the Void Dragon. However, the Necrons were always inventing new tech and methods to beat the Elder, such as breaching their webway and building pylons that nullified the warp. If it wasn't for the Eldar god of memes, Seo Gorach, tricking the Catan into having a civil war, followed up by the Silent King rebelling against them, the Necrons and the Catan would have genocided the galaxy and likely reigned supreme. But regardless of these fuck ups, it's clear that during the absolute peak, the Necrons were the most powerful faction in the entirety of 40k. They are also the faction that can return to their peak the easiest. They still have the Catan in their Pokemon form, most of their technology from the War in Heaven, and the Silent King has returned. So yeah, if Necron models start selling I would, a lot more than everyone is. I would argue that Yes, he's looking at all of these races at their height, but there's a lot of speculation information that is sort of missing. So, for example, why is it that they're so much more obsessed with fighting each other than actually conquering the galaxy? Trazen says that in that, uh, when he speaks about humans. They have immortality. They live forever. So, there's always tomorrow. Today we fight each other. Tomorrow we'll fight someone else. So once we've won, that's when we'll do things. There's no need for them to keep innovating. There's no need for them to to expand and to grow and to be better. Which is why I don't think that Necrons is the most powerful. Um, because at their peak, they were already immortal. So I think they would still probably lose against the humans. It's fucked. If you enjoy the video and you want to support the channel, then buy the Mage Kill cosplay calendar full of lovely ladies, awesome cosplay, and a lot of titties. The Patreon also has the unused raw shots for $10 and above. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more Hey, that's content. one thing. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I mean, it works selling a calendar with cosplay ladies. Hey, you know, titties sell. The Silent the King, the leader of the Necrons, saw the nids and panicked. I've not watched any videos yet about the Tyranids. I know who they are. Um, I know it's a it's an alien race that came from a different star system. But marketing meme? Dude, titties is the best marketing you can have. Every guy, even if he's gay, likes a bit of titty. Like, everyone likes a little bit of teddy. Tyrannids will devour all biomass in the galaxy eventually, and then it'll just be the Nids and the Necrons living side by side, since neither have a reason to fight. Hmm. Maybe. Allied with the Imperium for a bit to repel the Tyrannids from a world. Haven't read that book fully yet. I'm always up for motorboating. Even some girls like them? Yeah, of course. How can you not like titties? Oh, definitely finding the Tyranids. The Necrons just joined up with Dante and the Blood Angels to repel the Tyranids. I mean, the Tyranids seem to be the one, uh, like the one species that you really can't team up with. Because unlike all of the other races that would team up in, in dire circumstances, the Tyranids have one goal, and that is to consume all life. So yeah, it makes sense that the Necrons would fight them too, because even though the Tyranids can't quote unquote eat the Necrons, the Tyranids would probably still wipe the Necrons out, given the opportunity.
By master return to mortal form, they have to defeat Tyranets for that. Tyranets uh, also don't have common conscious uh, intelligence, VTuber physics, and a whole other level. Hey, being a VTuber has its uh, has its parts, bro.